Good some analysis and bringing Joshua Landis, Director of the Centre for Middle East Studies at the University of Oklahoma. Joshua, thank you as ever for being with us. Is there any sense that this will work and the Kurds in northern Syria will not be attacked? Um, you know, I think that everything is out on the board. Erdogan clearly, after December 14th, uh, call with the president, an escalation of this situation, he got the president's ear and he liked what he heard from President Trump in his first conversation. And President Trump then on the 19th of December decided it would pull out of Syria. This, of course, took all of his foreign policy team by complete surprise, and they had to scramble and redevise policy. So, in a sense, Erdogan wanted to speak directly to the president, but he learned that escalating, threatening to attack northern Syria, would get the president's ear. This time, the president has come back with a very strong escalation of his own, saying, if you attack Syria, we are going to punish you economically. Now there's a real conversation going on about this uh, demilitarized zone that's supposed to take place along the Turkish, the Syrian-Turkish border. We don't know who is going to fill that vacuum. Uh, and that's the real question. If the militias move away from it, meaning theoretically the YPG will have to move away from the Turkish border, um, who's going to take its place? Will it be the Syrian army? That's the big question. And of course, the thing is, Turkey's already expressed its... Um well, it's concern, it's worry, it's, it's fierce dislike of the only possibility of having any kind of Kurdish homeland on its southern border. Absolutely. And that's why it has wanted the Americans to withdraw. And we have to remember that the Americans originally promised to withdraw as soon as ISIS was destroyed. Then, uh, over time, a new policy was rolled out, which was to roll back Iran and that America would stay not only as long as ISIS wasn't destroyed, but also for a number of other reasons, which included getting rid of Iran from Syria. This was likely to keep the United States for a long time in Syria. And the Turks went ballistic. They said, you can't do that. It's going to develop a northern, you know, in a sense, quasi state run by the Kurds and the Kurds who are inimical to Turkey. So Erdogan began to escalate immediately, and he's gotten the president's ear. He got the president to say he would withdraw. Now it's really a question of, uh, of modalities. How quickly will the U.S. withdraw, and who is going to police that border? Will the YPG still have troops up there? Indeed, the YPG, of course, fighting alongside the U.S. against the Islamic <laughs> State group. Joshua, would you think Donald Trump thought any of this through when he made that announcement that the troops were going to pull out when he said, because the Pentagon didn't know, did they, that you know, he was going to make the announcement to bring the troops home? No, they did not know. And he, he went off on his own, as he likes to do. And uh, it was very dramatic. It got a, lots of headlines. It caused a lot of friction. And uh, clearly threw his entire foreign policy team on their heels. And in some ways, I'm sure Trump likes that because they were making policy without consulting him. And we've heard in the past how they, they take uh, policy papers off his desk if they don't want him to see them. So he's, in a sense, taken, taken ownership of this issue. He doesn't know a lot about it and the details, which, which means that, you know, we, we see this disarray within the foreign policy apparatus. There's not a lot of consultation. And uh, the whole world is beginning to see who believes what and how they're fighting within the White House, which is something that they usually cannot do. And it really looks uh, very disorganized.